Rad Reelers, JC here with Rad Reeling Fishing. This video, you guys, I'm going to be talking about prop maintenance, maintenance <laughs> and some prop, prop maintenance and some prop problems. The problem is, is the shear pin right here is seized. It's seized up inside of this shaft. It will not come out. Prop problems that I've had with my Old Town uh, kayak propulsion devices. This is the PDL drive here. This is the iPilot, the uh, Minn Kota iPilot for my Autopilot 120 kayak. I also had the Old Town Sportsman 106 powered by Minn Kota. I had the, uh, a problem with the prop, prop with that too. Um, it's not really a problem, okay? This is a maintenance issue. There may have been something in the information that Old Town provides about maintenance for the, for your props, right? <laughs> I fish in salt water a lot and uh, I just ran into this problem. Now I've got a, a, a pretty serious problem with the PDL drive because I didn't keep up with any type of maintenance. So hopefully you guys will learn some maintenance things here. But the other day I made a video, I was out fishing and I actually broke a shear pin on the Autopilot 120 and uh, I was taking all the parts off to replace the shear pin. And I realized something, and that is that at any moment I could drop the prop nut, the prop washer, or the shear, the extra shear pin down through the hole that the electric motor goes through when I was in the process of changing that out. So what I did is I called Old Town and I actually ordered for the Autopilot 120 an extra prop nut, a washer, and a bunch of shear pins. And I didn't really think about it at the time. I probably should have ordered an extra nut and prop washer for the PDL drive. But anyway, you guys, it didn't cost much at all. Um, the washer was 10 cents. The prop nut was 60 cents. And I got, uh, let's see, how many shear pins did I get? I got six shear pins. They were 99 cents each. So it didn't cost much at all to have extras of those parts. That way, if I'm out on the water, I'm not going to get stranded if I drop a prop nut in the water or a washer or something like that. But here's the issue that I've had, you guys, and it's a maintenance issue. Let me show you what's going on here. Um, so we're going to do a preventative thing on the Autopilot 120 to help prevent the particular thing that has happened to my PDL drive. And this also happened to the 106 Sportsman powered by Minn Kota that I used for several months. I had the same problem with that. So here's going to be the solution to the, to the maintenance solution of the problem. I don't know exactly how this is going to go for fixing this problem. So this is my pedal drive from my Predator PDL. I'm going to go ahead and pull the prop off of here and show you guys what's going on with this. Should you guys guys to see the the corrosion that is actually taking place underneath the prop here but that's not the problem the problem is is the shear pin right here is seized it's seized up inside of this shaft it will not come out i have uh i have gently tapped that thing with a hammer And it absolutely refuses to budge from the position that it's in. So I contacted Old Town about the issue that I have here. The solution that they gave me to the problem is to get an eighth inch punch like this. I don't know. I paid like six bucks on Amazon for this thing. Maybe not even that much. And uh, to try and knock that pin through with that punch. Um, I'll probably be able to get a little better surface grab on the pen when I'm hitting it with a hammer. Hopefully this is going to work. Um, if it doesn't work, Old Town then said that what I'll have to do is actually drill the pen out. So here's the solution to my problem moving forward, okay? Uh, once I get this pen out and I get it replaced, I'm going to put some anti-seize on the PDL drive shear pin and also on my Autopilot 120 electric motor shear pin. Um, and then I'm going to just make it a point as far as maintenance to remember, you know, every so often, every couple of weeks to take these props apart and move those shear pins, maybe even re-lubricate them so that I don't run into this issue again. I'll put a link to this product in the description area. I just actually read the back of the bottle here. I got it a couple of weeks ago. And what it says is that this is effective in temperatures above 66 degrees. Let's jump into this and see if I can get this bad boy to move using this eighth inch hole punch and uh, give this guy a whack or a tap.
I better move this motor. <sighs> and I tell you what, that thing is really seized in there good. It is refusing to move. All right, guys, well, I got nothing happening here. It will not budge. That pen has not moved at all. And the end of the pen is actually starting to mushroom on it. And uh, dang, I didn't even notice that on, on the pen when I was smacking it with a hammer too, um, it's also started to mushroom. So if I do actually get that thing to move at all, I'm gonna have to file down the edges of that pen so I can get it to go through. Hold down and suggest that I do this. I'm gonna be careful not to get this on the seals or anything around the prop shaft here, but I'm gonna actually spray this with some PB Blaster. I'm gonna lay it down so that PB Blaster has an opportunity to work down inside of the crease between the shear pin and the hole on the prop shaft and see if that'll help um, you know, cut that corrosion in there where this thing is bound together. All right, I'm gonna let that soak for a good while. We'll come back and smack on that thing again and see if we can get it to come out of there. While I'm waiting for the PB Blaster to help the situation, let's bring up the iPilot Minn Kota motor and go ahead and put some of that anti-seize on the shear pin. Uh, the one thing I don't have, I don't have my key with me, but I can just turn it by hand. It's not all that hard to get off of there. Give it a little wiggle and jiggle. Don't lose that. So I want to show you guys something. This shear pin right here, seriously guys, I just put the shear pin in here. Uh, it was two weeks ago. Um, I only fished like one time in the kayak since. And I, with my fingers, I cannot push that shear pin. If I was out on the water, I'd have to try and tap it out with something. So see if we can get that thing to move here. Yeah. Yeah, it is really, really tight. But I want to show you guys, show you guys these shear pins that are provided from Old Town. Look at the, look at the rust and the corrosion on that shear pin right there. So that's why we got to, that's why we need to, to do some maintenance things. Um, otherwise, this shear pin is just going to get corroded inside of the shaft and seize up just like it did on the PDL drive. So I've got a buddy of mine that's been a boat builder for many, many, for decades. And I was complaining to him about how these shear pins rust and how they corrode. And I said, what is the deal? Like when I'm, I'm, I was a kid, I just remember years ago having things that were stainless steel and they were stainless. I mean, you just didn't get stains on them, right? You didn't get rust spots. They didn't corrode. But here we are in 2021 and I have things that say stainless steel. Next thing I know, they start getting little rust spots on them and stuff like that. And here's what he said to me that he learned in the boating industry that if you take that word and you break it into two parts, stain less, that that's actually what it means. It stains less. The word isn't stain proof, right? So anyway, we need to get this shear pin uh, changed out here on the Autopilot 120 Minn Kota iPilot. And I'm going to put a new pin in there. We'll lubricate that thing up so we don't have a problem here. Oh, look at that. It has an applicator in there too. Nice. That is some, some thick goop. And I did say to, to stir up the contents of the container first, so we will give it a stir here. I'm sure just a little dab will do you. It's not going to take much. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my fingers. Just wipe that on there a little bit. Run that through one way, and I think I'll run it back through the other way. My buddy Otis, been an avid kayak fisherman for a very long time, suggested that I get some Never Seize or this type of NICs lubricant to use on this. He's definitely a problem solver. Anytime I have a problem and I throw it out there about the kayak, he, he comes up with some type of logical solution. But look at it on the, the back of the prop where the shear pin locks in. Look at the, the rust deposits and spots on there already from the shear pin. All right. Well, that's all I'm doing, guys. Let's put it back on. Oh, don't fall. Put it back on. Get her locked in place. Just use this wrench since I don't have the prop nut wrench. That'll work. All right. 
So Old Town designed this kayak for the extra shear pin to fit into the key for the kill switch, right? It pops into place. So this pin is constantly being exposed to salt water in my case, because I salt water fish all the time. So those rust deposits that you see on the pin, they had already started to form on the shear pin because they were exposed to salt water. They weren't even, you know, in the prop yet, but they were constantly being exposed to salt water. So here's my opinion about the pedal drive versus the electric motor, right? And the pedal drive, when I'm in shallow water, if I happen to hit like an oyster bar or something, I can stop pedaling instantly. And generally when I'm fishing in shallower water, I'm not going very fast. So the chances of me snapping a shear pin and the pedal drive, I mean, unless it got corroded so bad, if I just left it in there the way it seized up and it got even more and more corroded, that if I hit something, it would snap that pin. But with an electric motor, when you're cruising along an electric motor and you hit something hard, hard bottom in electric motor, the force of that thing spinning around really fast um, could snap the shear pin. The one that snapped off for me was I got fishing line wrapped up and it just kept peeling off of my, my fishing rod. It wrapped up hundreds of times around there and just caused so much tension that it snapped the shear pin. So uh, yeah, I was kind of freaking out. I didn't know which button to push on the remote control to get it to stop. And by the by the time I had done that, it actually snapped the shear pin. It broke my fishing rod. <laughs> I can laugh about it now. What a mess it was then. Anyway, let me tap on this a little bit. The PB Blaster's been on there probably a half hour. I, I don't have a lot of confidence that it's going to help, but we'll see what happens here. Let's try and take it from more of a downward angle. Maybe I can get more force on it than do it doing it sideways. All right, progress you guys. It actually moved. Bring in for a closer look. It did move some. Not much, but it moved some. All right, all right, all right. I'm sure the PB Blaster has helped, but also hitting this thing, uh, getting more of an impact going up and down rather than sideways is definitely doing the trick here. So I'm going to spin this pin around and go back the other direction. It actually looks like the pin is bent for me banging on it. Let's see what happens here. All right, well, you know what? I was making progress in one direction, but <laughs> I've always hated to do mechanical work. I get so frustrated. I just got to take a breather here for a second, you guys. Take a break. I'm going to spray some more PB Blaster on this thing, and we'll come back and we'll work on it here in a little while. All right, so I've got a really fine metal file here. I need to try and file off the mushroom edge on this shear pin because it is really starting to flatten out. No way that thing is going to go through the hole. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm really starting to think I'm going to have to drill this thing out. But maybe not. Hard to get in there because these files, they've always got this flat spot on them. There's not a lot of room to file that down with, and obviously I can't spin the pen. There's not enough room to grab a hold of it to spin it. As you guys know this edge right here on the file is excellent for cutting right there. I mean, it's just, I turn it up on edge and it's, it's cutting that mushroom right off of there. All right, let's pound on this thing some more. It's moving, baby. It's moving. Oh, look, the back side of the pin. It, it snapped off from the pressure. Cool. Maybe I can spin it around and push it out. Yeah, let's see if we can push it out this way now and get that hole punch to just go straight down through the hole like that. Oh yeah, progress. 
here's an idea. Instead of trying to get the, the pin out with a large surface of the pin sticking through, maybe it would be a better idea to just go ahead and snap the pin off, and then you'd be working with something more, you know, like the hole in the shaft rather than the pin mushrooming. All right. Let's let's give this bad boy a good whack here. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Went right through. Woohoo! We did it, baby. We did it. So in my PDL drive, I keep a bag of tools inside of here. And in here, I also have my shear pins. So I'm going to dump them out. I keep them in a couple of plastic bags. Let's take a look at the shear pins and see what they look like. There's the shear pin that's been in the bag now for uh, a little bit over a year. And that thing is all, all rusted. It's tainted. It's, uh, it's more like metal than stainless steel. Maybe they're supposed to be metal and not stainless steel. So watch this. This pin that I had in the bag is corroded so bad that it actually will not push into the hole. I mean, maybe I could whack it in there with a hammer, but we're not going to do that. We're going to put a brand new pin in there and put some anti-seize on it. That new pin slides right in there, see? That one that was corroded just wouldn't do it. Look at the condition of these stainless steel parts. There is no corrosion or rust. Nothing on that nut. And it's been exposed to the elements more than the shear pin has. And also the threading in the shaft was in perfect condition. Stain proof rather than stainless, apparently. So subscriber Jeff sent me a tackle box that actually had these little containers in them. It's got a foam seal and a lid on it, and uh, that foam seal just pushes inside of there like that. I'm thinking that's going to be the answer to uh, keeping these shear pins from getting exposed to the salt water. So I'm going to put the shear pin in there. Pop the top. There we go. In the bag she goes.